again, I'm Paul DeWinder with AEA Technology Incorporated. In this next video segment, we cover testing single wires in a harness. These are predominantly used throughout the aircraft industry. Information in our other video segments on coax testing and twisted pair testing are applicable to those cable types when used in aircraft. But single wires in a harness have a different dynamic in their impedance and velocity. Aircraft harnesses have a number of variables in the number of wires in a particular harness or harness section, velocity uncertainty, connectors, and wire gauges, all of which contribute to the changes you'll see in our STEP TDR's traces. First, let's look at a cross section of a harness. While the wires are individual, they are all in contact with each other. It's this capacitive coupling that determines the impedance between any two wires being used to test, or any one wire and the airframe. The next slide is a chart on how that impedance is affected by changes in the harness. Wires measured in a larger harness will have a lower overall impedance. Smaller harnesses, or when the harness splits down to a separate smaller harness, that impedance will rise. Additionally, the impedance of the two selected wires to measure will vary as they get closer or further apart during their run through the harness. These rules apply to measuring a single wire to the airframe as well. Since we can't fit an aircraft in our small studio, and shooting on an aircraft is awkward and tricky for lighting and audio, we have a series of avionics TDR traces of actual aircraft wiring. When troubleshooting a wiring issue, you'll need to open one or both connectors on the harness. First step is to inspect the connector for dirt, corrosion, moisture, or other damage. Note the bent pin in this connector. Second, we need to connect the TDR to either the pins or sockets in the connector. Our avionics TDR kit comes with a complete set of pin and socket connection leads for harnesses and connectors. Two wires that run to the same far end connector should be selected for testing. Next, use the cable list in the cables menu to select single wire type, best matching the wires being tested. The first trace shows the coax test lead at 50 ohms, then the socket test lead rising up to 100 ohms, and then the trace for the cable under test with impedance variations as the two single wires vary in distance from each other uh, during their run through the harness. The upward excursion at the far end indicates an open. Two cursors mark the start and the end of the run, showing the distance at 19 feet, 4 inches. The next trace shows more dramatic impedance variations that can exist in a harness and still be normal. Our third trace shows a single wire to airframe measurement open at the far end. And the next trace is the same wire now shorted to the airframe. Note the downward excursion at the far end. The last trace in our series are two single wires that have been compressed too much at a bend in the harness around the airframe. This is causing a dip in the trace at about 10 feet. Coaxial and twisted pair cables have a published velocity either on the cable or available from the manufacturer's data sheet. Single wires do not have a published velocity. Their velocity is dependent on the harness size factors discussed earlier. This can cause distance reading errors. The velocity factors on our avionics TDR's cable list are derived nominal velocities from the actual harnesses and are a good starting point. The following slides are tips on locating faults in a wiring harness with uncertain velocity. Method 1. Try to find the velocity by measuring the harness's distance with a tape measure or counting aircraft frames between two measuring points. Then select the cable menu and use velocity search to let the TDR compute the velocity based on the harness's length. If that method is not a good option, try method 2. First use the velocity in the cable list for the cable type selected. Take the TDR's distance to fall from one direction, say forward to aft. Measure off the TDR's distance reading and mark the harness with tape. Then use the TDR to measure the same pair in the opposite direction and mark that distance off with tape. If the velocity set in the TDR is too slow, the marked distances will be short and the two tapes will not meet. If the TDR's velocity is too fast, the marked distances will be too long and the tapes will be crossed. In either case, the fault will be centered between them and you can now determine the correct velocity for that harness. What sets our avionics TDRs apart from our other models? First of all, it has all the features and high performance found in our standard TDRs, 
including drop resistance and explosion proofing. But the avionics TDRs also have shielding against RF. Additionally, they have aircraft wiring lists and their internal cable list, and that saves time in choosing the correct cable types. The two models on the table are for civilian aircraft. Both are avionics TDRs, but the kit has all the pin and socket adapters required, plus other accessories, to make connections fast and easy. Additionally, the TDR, all the accessories, are contained in a full rugged case, with the anti fog easy layout. Our military version, designed for NAV Air and named the HOT, handheld aircraft wire tester, is in use through all Navy and Marine Corps aviation facilities and numerous other U.S. and foreign military locations. Its stock number is on screen and it can be ordered directly from NAV Air at Lakehurst, New Jersey or via DOD supply. This concludes our segment on testing aircraft wiring. Once again, thank you for watching and we hope you found this video informative. For more videos in this series, please visit our website at www.aeatechnology.com. Go to the library for a complete video list. If you have any questions, please contact us at the number shown below to speak to a sales or technical representative. Music